Hey everyone, and welcome to the August 12th, 2021 meeting of the Penfield Planning Board. We'll begin the night, uh, the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thanks everybody for coming out tonight and those of you watching around the world. Um, hope you're all enjoying your summers. Lori, would you please call the roll? Sure. Hatsky? Hatsky here. Bastion? Bastion here. Knauer? Knauer here. Tidings? Tidings here. Burton? Burton here. Sangster? Sangster here. O'Connor? O'Connor here. Weissar? Weissar here. Gray, here. All right. Just a quick note. Uh, do we need to read that statement that we've been reading all through COVID? We, that's all done now, right? We're done. Yeah, okay, good. Not necessary. I don't have to read that uh, statement then. Except for the public hearing aspect, there's there are, aren't they still taking um, public, public participation remotely? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we have minutes from the July 8th meeting, and uh, hopefully everybody's had an opportunity to review them, entertain a motion to approve from somebody. And I did approve. review the minutes and the video, okay. even though I was absent. Great. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Whoa. Moved and seconded. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Bastion. Bastion, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. All right. Um, just as a course of business, we're going to start. We start our meetings at 6:30 with a work session, and on public hearing nights. Uh, we move, as soon as we're done with the work session portion of the meeting, we'll move directly into the public hearing portion, and that'll be no later than seven. So if we're not done with our work session items, those will go on pause and we'll start the public hearing and get those out of the way, and then go back to the work session. The work session is a little bit different than the public hearing where there's no, uh, obviously everybody's welcome and encouraged to be here, but there's no uh, public participation. Um, during that period of time, it's really a, I guess what it's called, a work session. And then the public hearing portion, we invite uh, comments from applicants and uh, the public. So with that, Doug, would you uh, like to start going through our action and table items? Yes, we'll start with our action new business item. Um, so it's a field change to Panorama Park. Um, We've reviewed two lots on that, as well as an overall um, subdivision concept. Uh, as part of that, and as part of Building A, we approved a drainage system that runs along the uh, west side of the property, uh, along a drainage channel with uh, some infiltration <coughs> pipe that drains down to the pond uh, that they have for the development. Um, it was designed and intended to take some of the, the sheet flow and runoff from the mobile home park to the west. Uh, unfortunately, with some of the unprecedented rains that we've had recently, um, it's, we've come to find out that, that it's um, having some issues with uh, especially a point source discharge uh, from a pipe that discharges off of the mobile home property. They are proposing to come in and uh, install a pipe and manhole from that pipe that discharges uh, on the mobile home property behind building A, pipe it to a, uh, a low area or depression on the area that uh, we previously looked at building B, um, and turn that into a small pond, have that discharge then um, into the uh, road sewer network, uh, and drain that to the pond. Uh, at, for the main facility. So it will uh, take some of that discharge that would have run off through the west side drainage uh, channel and direct it through a secondary uh, means into the primary 
um, storm sewer for the, the property. And in doing so, we'll hopefully alleviate some concerns with uh, erosion along that drainage channel. Okay. So it was a kind of an unexpected thing? Yes. Uh, they had a couple. They were, uh, the worst one was, uh, I believe it was July 17th, we got something like three inches of rain, uh, which is more than we receive generally almost in, in the month. Um, we received that in, in less than a day, and it caused some significant erosion issues um, coming off of that property onto this property, since there is a, a significant drop between the two. Okay. Uh, engineering and uh, the rest of the staff have reviewed this? Yeah, we met yep. with uh, the developer at the site. Um, they kind of went through their plan. Uh, it makes total sense as far as uh, there's approximately like 15 acres from the mobile home park that... Uh, discharges right on the, their property and there is no existing facility on the mobile home park so they're taking this runoff and kind of detaining it and releasing it basically at the same rate or lesser but it goes into uh, this proposed storm sewer for panorama park which then would go into the pond at the base so they, we reviewed uh, the, all the calcs and it appears to be fine Okay. Uh, any board comments? Concerns? No. No, no contamination issues, Mike, no. running down the hill. Isn't there another pond down there someplace? Near the there is. They constructed a pond that's by uh, Elms Creek and the Runcoit Creek in there, and um, that's, you know, way oversized and will handle this additional flow, so. Thank you. Okay. Maybe entertain a motion to approve this. Tidings. Make the uh, to approve the application. I'll second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Bastion. Bastion, aye. Burton. <coughs> Burton, aye. <coughs> Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Uh, We'll move on to our tabled applications. Our first tabled application is uh, 1810 and 1820 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road, uh, known as Penfield Heights. Okay, um, I'd like to jump in here. Um, mixed use district is an ambitious undertaking for the town of Penfield. It was studied and designed for many years by a nationally <coughs> recognized consulting firm along with the town's mixed use committee and subsequently made into law by the town board and put under the approval process of the Penfield Planning Board. In order to provide uh, buffering to fit into the surrounding neighborhood as appropriately as possible, the district was divided into three distinct zones. Zone A being the most intense with the heaviest commercial use and zones B and C gradually becoming less intense and more residential oriented as it moves out from the central core of zone A. Admittedly, this is new territory for all of us in our town, and we're striving to make it the most successful, user-friendly, and attractive and functional neighborhood that we can. We have one project under our belt, and we now have two new applications before us, and it's incumbent upon this board to ensure that these projects meet the intent of the district as recommended by the mixed-use committee and approved by the town board, as well as meeting the needs and desires of current and future Penfield residents. Regarding the Penfield Heights project, the proposed project does not meet a number of the requirements in the mixed use district. As presently proposed, this is not an approvable project because it does not meet a number of the requirements of the Penfield Town Code, including several key requirements for a mixed use project in the town's mixed use district. Over the course of the board's review of this project, the applicant has not demonstrated compliance with a number of requirements, including uh, but not necessarily limited to the following. Uh, the traffic and parking study, uh, building height, percentage of non-residential uses, variation in architecture, roadway width and layout uh, in conjunction with uh, sidewalk widths, the multi-use path being 12% uh, average grade or 12% grade between landings, and uh, therefore, I'm moving to deny this application based on 
uh, those reasons. And hopefully everybody has a copy of the uh, draft resolution. And we can get a copy for the applicant. And we would encourage uh, the applicant, you're both welcomed and encouraged to resubmit uh, the application where the challenges noted within it can be reasonably overcome with an alternative design that is more in keeping with the codes and standards identified um, in the in the resolution. So with that, I, I will move to uh, approve this uh, denial. denial resolution. I will second. So move to okay. deny, in other words, right? Yes, yes. Hatsky? Hatsky, aye. Bastion? Bastion, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Canauer? Canauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. Okay. Um, like I said, we encourage uh, and welcome an alternative submission, more in keeping with the mixed use requirements. All right, on to table item number two. All right, application number, tabled application number two, 1787 and 1801, Fairport Nine Mile Point Road, known as the Pathstone Mixed Use Development. Uh, since we last met, um, the applicant has responded to the comments of the board uh, issued in your tabling resolution on July 8th. Uh, before you, you should have a packet uh, from the applicant that includes information on the Pathstone Corporation, including their key leaders, as well as um, other projects that they have undertaken within the Rochester and Finger Lakes area. Um, that did meet one of the requirements that you guys had requested uh, at the uh, July 8th public hearing. Um, as such, we've just received the, the August 5th submittal. Uh, staff is currently reviewing it, but they have made some changes uh, based on the request of the board, including better defining um, what the large, and I'll pull it up here if I can. Um, better defining uh, a use uh, within the uh, large proposed open space area in the parking lot. Um, I'm showing it to have an additional path as well as a, a garden and seating area. Uh, that was one of the requests of the board. Um, they did provide additional information. The hardscape court uh, will not be lighted, so it'll limit its use to daylight hours, uh, alleviating hopefully one of the comments uh, from the public um, with concerns for uh, noise, especially in the evening and nighttime hours. Uh, we do have the applicant in the audience if you do have any additional questions or concerns regarding the application uh, or the recent submission. <clears throat> okay. Um. You know, I understand, I'd like to reserve judgment on those lights on the uh, sport court, just from a, you know, let's say it's December at four o'clock in the afternoon, it's dark, but it might be nice enough weather to, to use that. And um, maybe there's an alternative way to ensure uh, peaceful quiet time for residents. Um, with that and we're still waiting on a number of uh, reviews and responses yeah so staff uh, based on their previous their earliest submission staff had um, reviewed it and provided PRC comments um, on July 2nd um, they had submitted revised plans just prior to the public hearing uh, on the 7th or the public hearing on the 8th they submitted on the 7th the staff was reviewing that when we got the resubmission on um, August 5th. We are going to be getting our comments out on the original submission as well as uh, beginning a review of that uh, more recent submission, um, just so that they have the comments that we did have um, under our previous review as well as any comments that are generated from the newer plan set. 
but this time staff has not uh, provided that to either the board or the applicant because we're, we're still conducting our review. Okay. <coughs> All right. So anything else that we want to cover specifically in regards to this application tonight before um, we table it? No, we'll point out uh, as far as seeker goes, we have, this was a type one action. We have sent out uh, agency letters. We have just started getting those back uh, from uh, the various uh, county, state and agencies. Uh, I think we're still waiting on a few, but if it's okay, I believe it, it would be your intent to declare lead agency. Okay. All right. Um. This year. This is mine, yeah. Yeah, do you want to move to table? <coughs> move to table. I'll second. <coughs> Pending responses, submissions, and responses, reviews. submissions, yep. Okay, so moved and seconded. Yep. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Bastion? Bastion, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. Okay. Anything else in the work session? Or could we move on to our public uh, hearing? That is all I had for you in the work session. Okay. <clears throat> Downstairs, are we ready for public hearing portion? All right. You may want to turn up your volume if we have uh, any callers. Are we doing callers? Yeah. Yep. Yep, we, we're still doing callers, and we still have the web form information <laughs> portal. Hey, out. Doug. Yes. Um, did did you guys get the Chris Lopez's oh, uh, memo yes, in to regard to it. this? Yep. Yeah, I believe we we included in the drop. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I should have mentioned the, the pathstone. It's in the package there. Yes. <laughs> with the pathstone, we had re we have received responses from the traffic study from um, our consultant as well as. Well, we got um, preliminary or preliminary right. from uh, our consultant as well as um, we got a memo back from the architectural consultant with his um, with his recommendations uh, for the architectural. Uh, design and, and overall layout of the the project. Right, I'm not sure if the board members had a chance to review those from Chris. Okay. Not totally yet. So maybe we can discuss those more. Um, right. September. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? No, that's it, sorry. All right, okay. So we will move on to the public hearing um, tonight. And we have three applications tonight. The way the process works is uh, Doug will read the application and then the applicant uh, is invited to come up to, I believe, that table right there with the two microphones, correct? It could be any of the three yes, up here. Sir. Okay, so the table with the two microphones and um, uh, present your application to us. Then the board will ask questions. At that point, once we're done asking our questions, we open up to the audience for uh, and the public at large for uh, their comments. And um, if you are interested in commenting, please uh, approach when when I call your name. Um, or call you up, uh, come up to the center table here and address your comments to the board and make sure that you're in the, um, uh, make sure you're talking into the microphone. <laughs> so um, with that, Doug, would you please read the first application? All right, application number one, McMahon LaRue Associates, PC, 822 Holt Road, Webster, New York, 14580, on behalf of Richard and Mary Montgomery, request under Chapter 250, Article 11-11.2 .11 of the Code of the Town of Penfield for preliminary and final subdivision approval for the subdivision of lands into two lots on 35.69 acres located at 1492 Sweets Corners Road. The property property is now or formerly owned by Richard and Mary Montgomery and zoned Rural Agricultural District RA2. Application number 21P-0023, SBL number 
125.02-1-2.1. Man LaRue Associates. Um, Mary and Dick uh, Montgomery are here with us tonight. If you have any questions for them, uh, the the overall parcel is uh, 34.019 acres, so it's a little bit smaller, but it's it's because the acreage uh, on the tax map is taken to the center line of the road, and we're only we're only putting in what is to the right of way line. And I realize title goes to the center line, but still. Uh, what the board needs to be concerned with is just the acreage that could be developed. And so we're proposing uh, <coughs> two lots. The, the homestead lot is, uh, is uh, 2.658 uh, acres. It's a two acre zoning, um, leaving lot two at uh, 31.361 acres. Uh, there's no construction anticipated. Uh, they're just dividing it. And um, that's that's, That's all there. I have. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Um, question. This uh, creates a substandard lot for that uh, exterior structure, correct? In terms of setback? Uh, mm -hmm. In terms of size? I think that the... No, it's, uh, it's over two acres. Two point. The, the lot is two acres, but uh, our code allows um, an accessory structure in a lot to be 192 square feet or 1% of the property size, whichever is greater. Um, to comply with that 1% requirement, the <coughs> lot would be required to be 4.96 acres. So I believe you guys are before the zoning board on August 19th for uh, area variance. That's correct. So we're, we've got a 50 foot rear setback on the accessory structure. And so we applied for a variance for that, uh, for that. For the structure. It's well screened, so we don't see any issues with it. Uh, but the zoning board makes that decision. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know if I have any other questions. Other members? Other questions? I, had, I had a question yeah. for staff. Um, if there was livestock in that building, what's the code for setback for livestock to a lot line? Uh, 100 feet, and they would be required to have five acres. Okay. There's no, there's no livestock. This is just a, uh, it's a fun building for all the yeah. So stuff okay. And storage. Okay. Being, being in that area, you know, some people do have livestock, and I'm just, you know. Thinking out loud, I thought it was 100 feet, but I wanted to clarify that. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely okay. right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments from the board? I'm going to say. Okay. Anybody in the audience care to comment on this application? All right, let me just check and see if we have any callers. Doesn't look like we have any callers. <coughs> If there's any submissions electronically, no. Nope. Okay, so I think we need to wait until the zoning board, uh, I believe we need to wait until the zoning board rules on their um, approval or denial of variance. Sure. Uh, so thank you very much. We understand, thank you. When is, when is the ZB8 duck? Uh, next Thursday, 8-19. Okay. A week. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Terrific. Thank you. Do we have to table that or no? Uh, we'll table it uh, right after. Okay. Cool. All right. Doug, next item. Application number two. Torquia Structural Engineering and Design, PC, 625 Panorama Trail, Suite Number 2210, Rochester, New York, 14625, on behalf of Mark A. Pandolf, request under Chapter 250, Article 12-12.2 .2 of the Code of the Town of Penfield, for preliminary and final site plan approval for the renovation of an existing house, including the proposed construction of an addition and freestanding garage, on one acre located at 1851 Clark Road. 
The properties now are formerly owned by Mark A. Pandolf and zoned residential R120. Application number 21P-0025, SBL number 123-1-27. We Because I'm gonna be referring to drawings and renderings. Yep, I can pull all that up for you. Okay, great, thank you. This is, we're all getting used to this new format. <laughs> so I'm, I'm old school with my users. You're, uh, you're as advanced as we are. <laughs> <laughs> That's <I'm> right. Like <laughs> um, good evening, members of the board. Um, my name is Mark Pandolf, and with me is my fiance, Beth Remus. Welcome. We, um, we purchased 1851 Clark Road in 2018, and um, I'll just introduce myself. I'm an architect. Um, I'm the co-owner of Plan Architectural Studio in Rochester, New York. And Beth is a registered nurse at Rochester General Hospital. And um, we are here tonight to happily present to you our uh, proposal for our forever home um, at 1851 Clark Road. And Doug pulled up the site. The, the existing conditions of the project is a one acre parcel um, with an existing <coughs> farmhouse uh, dated to 1890 and in 1905, uh, a small barn dated to 1905. There was a garage which is on the, on the aerial photo which we have since um, abated and demolished in preparation for the addition. And I'll note that the when we look, first looked at the property and purchased the property, um, we were looking for a fixer-upper. So we were looking for something that we could put our personality to and, and add to. Um, it was, we were pleased to find out that it was an 1890 farmhouse and one of the things that is one of our goals is to save and rehabilitate the farmhouse rather than demolish it and start from scratch. So that's a big part of the project. Um, the project goals for, um, for our house, number one is to save and rehabilitate the farmhouse. Number two is to preserve clear views from the original farmhouse to overlook the backyard as it currently uh, stands. Create a new addition that relates to, yet strategically differentiates the original farmhouse and to create a usable fenced in courtyard, which is only a portion of the, of the yard so that we can have a fenced in area and then the remainder of the acre is open to the back. In terms of the siting of the addition, um, it was important that we didn't encroach on the setbacks of the original farmhouse. The, bay, the, the existing bay window of the farmhouse is 26 and change, I think, to the, um, to the right of way. The current setback for this district is 50 feet, mm -hmm. which we're well aware of. Um, the, the new addition is aligned with the back, the east wing of the farmhouse on purpose so that we're not proud of the farmhouse and we're not encroaching on the existing um, original setback. And we can go through, I can also show you at some point the, the floor plan if needed, but once you enter into the addition, it steps back as quickly as we could based on the floor plan to get to the 50 feet setback. So um, two thirds or three quarters or even more of the, of the addition is behind the setback, it's just, how we were able to negotiate the connection and the, um, the linking of the two structures was, was important to us. <clears throat> One thing I will note is where it says new covered porch on the existing house, that's currently a dining room in the house. And it was apparently filled in mid-century, probably the 1950s. Um, it was, pr it, we don't have, I've spent plenty of time looking at um, doing research. I, there is no evidence of any old photographs or, or plans, but 
I would imagine that was once an open porch and we're gonna turn it back to an open porch. And when I meet with the zoning board next week, one of the things I'll emphasize is we're taking um, 200 plus square feet of um, non-conforming interior space and <coughs> eliminating that. Um, so it's to help, um, sort of to help justify potentially the, the setback, the, uh, the zoning setback. There's circulation. Um, if, Doug, are you able to pull up the first floor plan too? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. So, and we have renderings which we can go through. On the, on the left hand side is the original house. On the right hand side is the addition. It's connected by an eight foot wide foyer, foyer um, that links to, that is transparent front to back, uh, fully transparent glass. Once you make your way into the addition, building steps back to the 50 foot setback line. The main circulation of the house is right through the center, uh, north south, right through the main uh, portion. Yep, where Doug's showing, and out. If you head to the left, which is out to the side yard behind the farmhouse, circulation continues behind the farmhouse. So it ends up it ends up um, defining the old and the new with circulation and, and it also reinforces the fact that the, the, the farmhouse is a standalone um, building, but it's connected to the addition. Also as part of the um, proposal is a, a freestanding three bay garage, which is on the site plan. So the purpose of, of we set the garage way back. Um, it serves a couple of purposes other than storing vehicles. It um, set back far from the road, so it's not this hulking garage that's um, the first thing you see. It's sort of, uh, um, it takes a, a back seat to the design, and it also helps to frame the courtyard, which is important to us with, um, which will be um, post and rail transparent fencing. Um, The building massing and materials, we, we could perhaps go to the renderings. So if there's, if there's one that's a straight, there we go. So this kind of tells the story. Um, original farmhouse, two stories. The addition is one story. Um, the transparent foyer links the two. The, um, the massing steps down. There's the gable end of the farmhouse, the gable end of the addition, but the addition is, is um, ma the massing of the addition is such that it doesn't overwhelm the existing house, and that's deliberate. The, we're sort of uh, re returning the farmhouse back to a farmhouse with horizontal lap siding. Um, we're using a poly ash siding from Boral. It's, um, it's dimensionally, it's the same size as dimensional lumber, but in it's saws and nails like dimensional lumber, but it's waterproof and rot, rot resistant. Um, I have samples as well. Standing seam metal roof throughout. Um, Clad wood windows, two over two, light configuration. Um, and water table is a natural quarried, uh, thin cut stone over the um, structure or the, the um, poured in place concrete foundation. So the vocabulary of the addition relates to the vocabulary of the original. They, they are tied together, but as you can see from the renderings, there's a there's a clear differentiation between the two. Um, if you could, maybe we can go to a couple other renderings. Here's a view. 
This also helps to tell the story. This is heading north down Clark. The grade is such that the grade actually drops, so it enables the, um, the addition to, it exposes some of the foundation wall of the addition and brings some light into the basement. The basement doesn't, we're not planning on finishing the basement. It's just a, uh, it's just a, a, a basement. And the gable ends of the addition, to add to the differentiation of the two, are treated with a um, Shosugiban um, vertical charred wood uh, siding. So that's what you see, that's the charcoal gray. And that'll be vertical, all the other siding will be horizontal shiplap siding. <clears throat> Got another rendering. So this is the back, standing out in the back looking uh, east, right in the center is the farmhouse, mm -hmm. the additions to the left, and maybe you can zoom in on that. This is where you can start to see the, um, the covered, there's a raised covered back patio that is part of the circulation from the addition, and it's the large glass wall that goes into the farmhouse. We're planning on that being the folding uh, folding doors, so it can open right up, and it enables you to uh, stand in the original house and look out to the backyard like you can today. I think that's um, that's the that's the big picture of everything. Um, we're happy to take questions or uh, clarify anything anyone has. Well, I will say that this is probably the most comprehensive application for a project of this size that I've seen in a long time. Um, the, on the site plan, there looks like a northern driveway. Is that the existing driveway? That's correct. So that, we're, we're using it as a stable, what's the term for it? Construction stabilization Stabilized entrance? Construction entrance. So that when it's being constructed, there's a place for trucks, and then okay. that, that gets removed. And then removed. that goes away. Okay. I, my eyes are getting bad. I was looking at this, and I'm thinking, okay, proposed driveway. And as you were discussing the application, I came to the conclusion that it wasn't going to be there in the future. The, um, the charcoal gray, does the rendering... Um, it, I didn't know if I was looking at shadows or um, a very, very dark wood or... Uh, I, mean, I think it's an interesting treatment. We haven't selected it, the color yet, but if we go with the darkest, this is actually the charcoal comes off in your hands, but... Okay. No, that's a, that's unless somebody else. There's um, all variations. There's medium. <coughs> there's variations of uh, charred. So that'll be vertical, and then white siding. Correct. Okay. Um, and again, you need a setback variance from the zoning board, right, for the addition. That's correct, and um, I spent we spent a lot of time designing this, and if there was a way to do this that made sense without um, the variance, I would have gladly have done it, but we, I, I wrestled, with, um, wrestled with it and um, met with Doug and uh, Mark Valentine and reviewed everything, and um, we all kind of thought it made sense. Yeah, yeah it looks like it'll be a nice Yep. Nice property. <clears throat> Any other comments from yeah. the board? Yeah, just, uh, Mark, uh, what about the barn in the back on the north side? You just leave that there or take that down eventually? So the intent is to restore that. Um, at, when the house is done, we'll take the time and restore it. Um, we definitely want to keep it. It'll be a garden shed, and um, it's a, I think it's a great asset, and it tells a story. And um, it's actually, it's timber framed inside. It's really, Solid. 
Pretty it's really nice inside. The, the siding is in rough shape. Um, it, needs, it needs a new roof and um, siding and window restoration or repairs, but we, we plan on um, doing that in the future. I was out there today. I don't know if anybody was home. In case you saw me walking you're around. Trespassing and wandering yeah, on their property. Yeah, I'm sorry. I you were home. But, uh, and the only other question, so that's all stone around the whole house? Lower part, is that all around the, whole, the front too? That's correct, and um, I'm looking at um, a natural cut stone um, versus a cultured stone, which is uh, concrete, which sucks up water. So the natural stone can be buried. And um, it's a thin stone. It ends up one to one to two inches thick, and it's adhered to the concrete. The veneer on the concrete block, or uh, actually poured concrete um, okay. foundation, and then this will go on uh, adhered to it. Okay. And that's all the, the white <coughs> main part of all out. That's all wood too. So it's a. I was just thinking, you know, the front there, especially the front entrance. I mean, it it's a poly ash. Nice. It's it's look for for all intents and purposes, it's wood, but it's um, it's a composite, poly ash siding, waterproof, and um, it saws and and um, you nail through it like wood, and um, it'll be painted. I'll have it. We'll have it shop painted so it arrives on site with two coats of paint and. Um, and that's the didn't that's think the, any stone in the front there to break that up though you know I'm looking there at the, the porch the you know near the doorway there to break that up at all any stone like to bring back the farmhouse appeal to it or anything like that your thoughts on that oh at the porch yeah the, at the front porch right yeah so what you're looking at is actually the original that's all the original stone foundation right. um, the farmhouse has an existing stone foundation that'll be repointed I'm good, thank you. All right, any uh, other comments, questions? No, no I'm uh, quite frankly, I'm blown away by the uh, <laughs> applicant <laughs> and the detail you've gone into yeah. for this, and it looks like a wonderful project. You know, That's what I'm uh, hoping the zoning board says. I don't really want to waste time, but it's like, uh, okay, what new materials are you using? <laughs> <laughs> What's the latest and greatest? thing. Uh, okay, anybody in the audience uh, wish to care uh, comment on this application? All right, we have nobody here. Let's see if there's anybody that's called in or we have no electronic comments. All right. Like I said, it was an excellent presentation. Um, very well prepared and thank you for thank you for coming in thank you so is there a, uh, it, would you have to vote on this yeah. vote we'll, we'll vote uh, post public after hearing. the okay. public work hearing session. is closed we'll have a quick uh, work session and um, I'm not sure if we can take care of this one tonight, or if we need to table it because of the zoning board. And then I'm not sure. The zoning we board, that he's, he will also be at the August 19th zoning board here. Okay. So, all right, so we got to wait till September. Okay. So the, the formality is you you would say that you would approve it, but it has to get the zoning variance, and then. So, yeah. So um, just because we're, we're planning construction in September, so. Um, the September meeting is when? September 9th. Okay. Oh, that's early on. So we should be fine. I have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> None of us do. <laughs> thank you. All right. Hey, thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for coming in and enjoy the heat. Okay. All right. Application number three. Okay. Application number three, McMahon LaRue Associates, PC, 822 Holt Road, Webster, New York, 14580. On behalf of Penfield Country Club, Inc., requests under Chapter 250, Article 12-12.2 and Article 13-13.2 of the Code of the Town of Penfield. 
for preliminary and final site plan approval and modification of a conditional use permit for the proposed construction of a shop building near the existing maintenance structures on 188.6 acres located at 1784 Jackson Road. The property is now formally owned by Penfield Country Club Inc. and zoned Rural Residential RR1. Application number 21P-0026, SBL number 124.02-1-40.1. Good evening. My name is Greg McMahon. I'm with McMahon LaRue Associates, uh, representing Penfield Country Club. Also here tonight, uh, if you have any questions for him, is the manager of the Country Club. Uh, we're uh, here tonight uh, requesting approval of a new 2,500 square foot maintenance building uh, to be located in a complex of the maintenance facility, uh, which you can see um, is just east of the clubhouse. Uh, you come into this off of the parking lot. Uh, there are right now three uh, pole barns. Uh, they're used for uh, various storage. Two of them are, are storage of uh, equipment. Um, used on the golf course. One of them uh, is some storage, but it also serves as a, a shop uh, for the staff, uh, lunch room, sharpening equipment and so forth. Um, uh, this fourth structure, and I think, Tom, if, if you want to come up and um, I, what it's intended to be used for. Sure. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Um, we're going to use this structure. You could just introduce yourself sure. for the name and address. For the my name is uh, my name is Tom Shonley. I'm the GM and COO of uh, Penfield Country Club, and I am a Penfield resident as well. Um, but we are we are looking to use this facility for our our ability to work on equipment. Our current facility is inadequate. Uh, we are looking to add a facility that we can use. Lifts and different other areas. We're currently operating that entire building that he's operating out of currently is all those things that uh, that was said by Mr. McMahon. But we are looking to we need a bigger shop for our guys. We need a bigger workspace for them to be able to to be able to take care of our golf course in the manner in which it's uh, meant to be. So that is the, the rationalization for us. We're also putting a lean-to on the back of the building, which is going to apply for more storage space for our equipment that currently sits outside in the winter, rust and things like that that we really have uh, had to encounter over the last uh, few years. And that's what that is the main uh, purpose of this building. You can, you can see from the aerial photo that uh, this new building is going to occupy an area on the site that's currently be used for outdoor equipment storage. There's uh, backhoe, I think a bulldozer uh, equipment, uh, uh, piles of materials that are used on the course uh, stored in this area. So we're, we're not uh, deforesting any, any areas here. We're utilizing uh, an area that's basically crushed stone right now and used for equipment. There will be uh, there will be uh, at least proposing to run utilities to this building, um, electric for the lighting. Uh, we'll tie this into uh, on-site utilities, uh, a lateral a force main to their existing uh, sept or not septic. It's it's a, a pump on site. Um, gas will be brought over so. Uh, they will have for future use in here all all utilities okay i have a i guess a couple of questions um where is the equipment that's being stored there today going to be stored in the future and same thing with i'm guessing there's probably mulch piles and things 
or like that, maybe topsoil or whatever that so you our, use uh, on our current site. facility that we have. We're going we're going to be um, there's a lean to on the back where we're going to be able to store our dump trucks. We're going to be able to store some of our other equipment. We have a backhoe. We have a shop bag <coughs> or a beef vac that currently sits outside. Our mulch piles and other stone aspects are actually out in our dump, which is located on the all the way on the back part of the. Uh, of the range that we have back there, which are those piles there that you currently can see. Got it. Um, those do have tarps on them currently so that we're able to access that. Um, we're kind of dealing with a 1958 building in the year 2020, so, or 2021. So we're trying to really uh, grow that facility and that environment based on our current demographic with membership. Okay. I, I mean, I have to say that when I looked at the site plan, it took me a little bit to figure out where this was <laughs> and uh, far off the road. then looking at the uh, aerial it helped me gain perspective but I mean it really isn't going to be seen no sir by anybody um, no. any yeah. other no, questions no. I, I met with Tom today thanks Tom for taking the time to show me uh, the facilities <laughs> it looks great back there uh, there are no uh, neighbors or anything there's a lot of trees in the area that shouldn't affect anyone the sign looks good, the new sign in front, too. <laughs> thank you. So uh, thank you, and uh, I don't have any other issues. Okay. I would note that we are there are federal and state wetlands on the property, but we're outside the limits of those, those wetlands. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Any additional light fixtures? I'm just concerned, even though it's far, pretty far away from neighbors, but more <coughs> dark sky compliant fixtures. We haven't, they're added. we haven't proposed any lighting um, on the okay. buildings. Uh, they're basically utilized from sunrise to sunset, more early morning, getting the course ready for the golfers than late in the evenings. So, okay. um, yeah, there, there is no lighting proposed. The current buildings are, are, are lit on the interior, mm -hmm. uh, but there is no uh, outdoor um, fixtures right now. No there may need. be a, a little light by a door or something like right. that, but no, nothing that would be um, obvious to neighbors. Okay, thank no you. No need to illuminate a space for you know, bag boys after they're done late at night cleaning up the carts and stuff. They're in the they're in the front part of the building. We do have an existing structure for them to work out of, so there won't be anybody. Uh, actually, that building that is circled is the cart barn okay. there, and then the bag room staff is uh, located right by the pool area as well so there okay. won't be anybody past three o'clock that works down in that in in that uh, portion of the complex okay all right well so good motion to approve tidings uh, hold on anybody in the audience oh, like to comment on this application <laughs> no okay <laughs> let me just check <laughs> to see if uh, we have any submissions electronically or anybody on the phone. Looks like we have nobody. Um, well, again, nice presentation. Thank you, sir. And uh, thank you for coming in. And we'll call you here and closed. <coughs> Very good. Thank you. So I'm just curious. and I'm, I'm happy to see that things are going well there in your expanding your facilities is membership holding membership currently is on a wait list in every category that we have that and, is fantastic um, you know things are really going well for us in, in our current uh, current state I think uh, we do want to continue growth and what we what we mean by that is continuous member experiences and different aspects like that so we're hoping in the future that we're coming before you for other projects so but thank you all for Hope your you time do. today I appreciate it I that's can, great I, I grew up at this club. I, I swam in that pool when I was this high. Hopefully that's the next project that we're coming to you for, sir. <laughs> New pool? Yes, sir. Terrific. All right. So let's uh, cover some of these applications. We want to go back to front on these since these gentlemen are still here. Sure. Okay. Uh, is there anything holding back in approval on this? I haven't completed a draft approval resolution at this time, but if you guys are comfortable, we can get something out. It's, it's uh, relatively. We can use uh, one of our boilerplate with some 
site-specific nuances? Anybody? Yeah, there's not any significant site-specific nuances. It is a conditional use permit because golf courses are conditionally permitted use within residential zoning districts within the town. Um, they're a long-standing uh, conditional use, and they've been around a number of decades. Uh, so we don't foresee any issue with this building, uh, you know, putting them outside of their conditional use permit. All right. Anybody have any issues? Try it again. Yeah, try it again. Motion to approve the application. Tidy. I'll second. Oh, we got also have a part two. We have completed yeah. a part two oh. EAF. So oh, it's okay, back up. Uh, <laughs> we'll <hold on>. Oh, <laughs> boy. Sorry, Sorry guys. It's not, not so fast. Work. It's not going to work. <laughs> we tried. Right? <laughs> Motion to approve the EAF. I'll second. Hetsky, aye. Bastion. Bastion, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. <clears throat> so we, you don't want us to do an environmental impact statement on this? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, a motion to approve the application, Tidings. I'll second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Bastion. Bastion, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck. Thank you. <coughs> Have a good night. You too. Okay. All right. Now What's moving backwards. 1851 Clark Road. Clark Road. So we had the table that one for the zoning board, right? Yeah, so we can't. Uh, we can't approve it pending the zoning board. Is staff not ready for that? What's the? Uh, uh, no, again, I don't have, have a. We have in the past. Yeah, conditioned um, it. Well, no, um, asked staff to put the ZBA on notice that we're in favor of the application. Yeah. To the extent that. that you that could helps. draft. So uh, we might. We might do that. Draft a generic support memo that the planning board is supportive of the application and the variances requested. Something like that. You do that. I think that's a better approach. Okay. All right. You want to move that? Who's whose project is it? Cheers. Cheers. Unassigned. Generic. Cheers. Oh, yeah. I'll I'll hmm? I'll move that uh, uh, we request that staff uh, send a, uh, a memo to the zoning board of appeals indicating our uh, 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 general uh, approval of the project pending their their variants yeah. review. They're rendering. We I'll second. second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Bastion. Bastion, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Do we have a environmental assessment form uh, that we could yep, get out of the part two? The part two EAF. Move to approve the EAF. I'll second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Bastion. Bastion, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. So, you guys tabling that, or are you looking to approve it pending the outcome of the zoning board? I think they're tabling it. We're tabling, yeah. tabling it? Okay. Yeah. Pending the zoning board action. Do we need a motion to table? I don't think we had a motion well, to table. Maybe it was part of the. Yeah, we could move to table. Why don't Why don't we just make that part it's of? We're going to table this and send pending the letter. The, oh, and send the letter. Okay. Send the memo to the zone Okay. Board. Nope. Yeah, that works. I think, I yeah. think Bill wanted his own motion tonight. Yeah, I did. I haven't had one yet. You guys are designing. There's one you're left. You're, you're, it's all <clears> yours. <throat> okay. Wow. It's town you can't. All right. Fine. <laughs> okay. Application number one, Sweets Corners. Same deal? Same deal. Okay, should we do the EAF? Yeah, we're I, doing EAF. I'll second. Who, who, did who did you move? You move I didn't, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> I did. It's, it's near and dear it's, to your heart, right? It's not far from your house. So. It's not far. So I will make the motion. I'll second. 
EAF. EAF. Moved by Knauer, second by Bastion. Hatsky. Hatsky, aye. Bastion. Bastion, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. All right, now uh, we want to get a motion to table based on, is there any, any deal breakers on this? Uh, you know, we even know the variances, is it? So the variance the on area. that one is, um, so they have an existing accessory structure on the site. It is currently compliant. It was built, I believe, in 1985. It's 2,600 square feet. Um, our code allows accessory <coughs> structures that are 1% of the property size. At 35 acres, that's a, a rather large number. At 2.6 acres, or 2.65 acres, uh, the maximum allowable accessory structure under our code would be, I believe, 1,170 square feet. I can double check that with math. Um, and the existing structure is 2,600 square feet. Um, being larger than that number, they have to approach the zoning board for an accessory structure that is larger than allowed by code. But I thought Al was talking about a setback. Uh, I know he talked about it, but it's compliant with setbacks. Yeah, it's just so an area variance, I believe. So I'm worried that I don't know what they're requesting. Right. I can it's double check their exactly. app. We can double check their application and ensure. Table Let's table it pending the outcome the of the uh, zoning board yeah, meeting. Requesting an area variance, right? Right. Yeah, just table it. Oh. And again, let the. Uh, let the ZBA know that we're in, in, generally in support of this application. I think we should avoid that in this case yeah, because we don't I, really know. Why? Are you not in support? No, I don't know what they, they really want or what the variance is like we just, Mike just said. I know, but well, th it's got nothing to do with how we feel. I mean, well, are, you, are you generally in support of them breaking out a homestead lot to put the house on and, and leave a larger parcel to sell? I say no, wait till the uh, zoning board makes a decision. So their zoning board letter of intent, it looks like their application was for an area variance uh, for a storage barn that is larger than allowed by code okay. on a 2.658 acre parcel. So, so Al was, was there. Right, he was just confused. So they are was, requesting yeah, the right thing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So it is just an area variance. So if the board deems it the, based on approval. You know, you know look, Terry, if, if, if we're going to send, there's, there's two applications, two of our applications going before the zoning right. board next week. So if we, if we tell them on one that we're generally in support of that, right. hoping that, you know, uh, that might help them to move this along and we don't tell them on the other are we right. sending a message that we're not really in support right well I, that's why i'm not a big I, advocate of I, that but i well, did for the reasons you mentioned in this particular case no i, I don't yeah. agree well we if that's how the board yeah. feels i guess i I'd, I'd rather be consistent in that well let's see how yeah uh, I, I i don't agree with um granting that variance personally seeing what's built out there the size of the lots you know the the other folks that are in there that follow compliance um those that have livestock and you know it's um for that zoning area you know there's reasons why that area variance exists and for that area of town it's a uh, I don't know if it's necessarily intense, but it's there's a lot of coverage on a small lot. So, Doug, how much more, how much more, uh, how much larger would the exception parcel need to be in order to permit the size of the accessory structure? Because that's really the remedy, right? Basically, five acres. Yes, I think it needs to be about five acres. I believe it was four point nine six. Right. Yeah. Is there any and they're asking on for the 2.65. Just make that 
No. A five acre lot? Uh, they're requesting the reduction because uh, I believe the intent is in the future to sell off that second lot that they're creating, the 31 acre lot for development, and they believe they'd be able to gain an additional lot at 2.65 acres that they would lose if they were at 4.96. But 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 this is this is self-inflicted. Yes. Yes, Correct. it's self-created. Totally. Okay. So they could say we're going to separate out five acres. And from a zoning standpoint, hardship yeah. cannot be self-created. So right. what kind of answers that. Uh, yeah. For for area variances, there's a little bit of leniency in the code in terms of <coughs> self-created um, issues, but. Uh, they tend to weigh that as a factor relatively heavily, from my understanding. Um, so, right. Okay. Table. So why don't we just pen, table it pending yeah. the outcome of the zoning That's what I'd decision. like to do. Yeah. Me too. I'll make the motion there's the table presently. I'll second. I got a lot of seconds. A lot of seconds. A lot of seconds today, yeah. Hatsky. Hetsky, aye. I think six. Bastion? Bastion, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. Okay. Any other business? That's all I have for you guys tonight. All right. Our next meeting is September 9th. September 9th. Hope everybody's enjoying their Labor, summer. Labor Day. What? Right after Labor Day. Yeah, right after Labor Day. Thursday after Labor Day. Okay. I may be a grandfather, but I should be a grandfather by then. Congratulations. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Just letting the whole world know. <laughs> <laughs> one more birthday meeting. to buy for. Public What's that? Yeah, one, more public one more Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, we will adjourn and have a good night, everybody. Mm -hmm. Historical.